just a little kick of his tail. He can see completely all the way around him. He hears something. He can turn and look that way. He can see it coming from a great distance. That fish has a great range as far as being able to hear something, see it approaching the bed, see it move into the bed, watch it go out of the bed. A fish that's in heavy cover, think of it being, think of it being like it's down in a tire. I mean, it's got a limited amount of, of peripheral vision where it can see. It may hear something, may be able to feel it, the vibration or whatever coming, but it can't lay its eyes on it until it's maybe, maybe a foot from it, maybe 18 inches from it, something like that. So you get a little bit more of that element of surprise with your bait on a fish that is in that heavier cover. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and uh, here for the month of April, we're going to talk about mouth calling tips and box call tips. No, I'm just kidding. I wish. <laughs> you need to watch somebody else on that. I'm not very good at either one of them, but occasionally I will get a dumb enough turkey that will play my game. That's what I try to do a lot of in April. But anyway, I guess we'll talk some fishing um, just like we, uh, we talked about with the pick two more for this month. And for that pick two more, we went with the hollow bellied frog. Uh, that's the Terminator Poppin' Frog, as well as the Terminator Swim Jig. But for the technique of the month, this technique of what I want to talk about using these two baits is about fishing for fish that are spawning that are in heavier cover. Um, you know, I think a, I think a lot of, of places that, that we fish or that we think about where fish spawn, you know, we think of maybe it's beside, you know, one dock post or... Um, you know, that there's just a scattered piece of cover here and there. And that's certainly the way, um, the way some fish spawn in different places. I think of, uh, you know, like where Heavy Hitters was down at Lake Palestine last year. A lot of those fish that I caught there were, you know, a lot of those were on dock posts. They were in some man-made canals and there was some w wood in some of them. But a lot of it was fairly open, you know, type places. I might be in a confined area, but the fish weren't in heavy cover. Okay, so, and that's not what I'm talking about with these two. I'm thinking of, you know, like a Lake Okeechobee or a Lake Kissimmee or, um, you know, a place around here that's got a lot of grass in it where those fish will be spawned up, you know, right in the middle of, of some really heavy cover. And sometimes that cover's coming all the way to the surface. Um, you know, even Douglas and Cherokee Lakes this time of year, water level's rising. There's been vegetation that's grown up, you know, all throughout the spring that is now being, being covered up. Um, some places that have a lot of buck bushes, those fish love to spawn in and around those buck bushes. When those fish are spawning in places like that, they're, they're somewhere you have to use a weedless bait, you know, just to be able to get to them. I've caught fish in, in such open water, you could just catch them on a swim bait with a, you know, just an open hook on, on a jig head. That's not the case. That's not what I'm talking about with this deal. I'm talking about fish that are you know, that are in places that are really, really hard to get to. Um, and, and again, it becomes a deal with just efficiency, you know, something that you can get in and out of that cover where those fish are at to be able to make a good presentation, sometimes multiple presentations to the same place to be able to get those fish to bite. One thing in general though, I do feel like a fish that is spawning in and around heavier cover is usually a fish that's more comfortable and a fish that is a lot of times going to be more aggressive. Um, you know, a fish that's out just on one little old dock post or maybe he's got one piece of wood, you know, kind of laid down there that he's got a bed next to or something. That fish, you know, if you imagine that fish sitting in a place like that, he can see 360 degrees, you know, just, just a little kick of his tail. He can see completely all the way around him. He hears something. He can turn and look that way. He can some, see it coming from a great distance you know, whether that's on the surface or that's mid-depth or that's on the bottom. That fish has a great range as far as being able to hear something, see it approaching the bed, see it move into the bed, watch it go out of the bed. A fish that's in heavy cover, think of it being, think of it being like it's down in a tire. I mean, it's got a limited amount of, of peripheral vision where it can see. It may hear something, may be able to feel it, the vibration or whatever coming, but it can't lay its eyes on it until it's maybe maybe a foot from it, maybe 18 inches from it, something like that. So you get a little bit more of that element of surprise with your bait on a fish that is in that heavier cover. And because of that, I just feel like they are a more aggressive fish when they are actually on a bed. 
And that's to me why a lot of people catch fish that are spawning in heavy cover, but the angler had no idea that was actually a spawning fish when they caught it. Is because that fish doesn't act like the ones that you read about where you threw 10 times at the same spot before you ever felt a fish bite. Or it's just a very aggressive bite on something like a frog from a fish that was actually spawning. Um, you know, I think that that is a, a stuff that a lot of people don't realize how often that it happens. Um, a big thing with both of these baits, touched on a little bit in the, uh, in the pick two more, um, but a big thing with both of them is the speed in which you fish them. Obviously, you know, a, a hollow belly frog floats, you can fish it as slow as you want to. You can dead stick it, you can throw it in there and just let it sit, you know, over top of where you think a fish is spawning but certainly you can walk it back and forth. And that's what I'm gonna do with the frog. It's gonna be a deal where, you know, I try to make a cast where I, where I think the fish is or beyond it ideally, and then I can work it up to, you know, where I expect that fish to be, if that's a base of a tree or under a buck bush or, you know, in some submerged grass. Um, but make a good cast beyond my target and then fish it slow up to it. This is gonna be a time of year where I'm not fishing a frog fast. I'm not trying to cover water with it. This is a fairly short cast deal, and I'm, I'm being methodical with the way that I'm fishing that bait. Twitch, 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 you know, really kind of walking that bait back and forth, allowing it to settle, moving it again, and, uh, and doing that, you know, where I'm trying to keep that bait from covering too great of a distance too quickly so that as I'm nearing it where I think a fish's bed could be, it's gonna have a little bit of time to hang there over that fish and hopefully aggravate it into biting. Pretty similar deal with the, with the swim jig. Um, a dark color swim jig like this, for the most part, I don't, I don't fish it like I do a swim jig when I'm fishing it around the shad spawn. That time of year, it's mostly about pumping it. I'm kind of wanting that bait to swim, you know, throughout the water column a little bit. Um, this time of year, in and around this heavier cover, this is more about a, more, a little bit more steady retrieve, but with the rod tip high, and then I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shake it. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not one of those guys who real, real aggressively shakes my rod tip when I fish a swim jig, but I'm rod tip high and giving it at least a little bit of shake to where that bait's kinda you know, popping along a little bit as it goes um, is the way I like to fish a swim jig in and around the spawn um, for me. But a big part, such a big, big key is simply the trailer you put on the back of it. Three eighths is my go-to size in that Terminator uh, heavy duty swim jig. But the trailer on the back is nearly as important as the jig itself as far as actually getting the strikes. Um, this is that Bass Pro Swim and Crawl, but it's a type of trailer that creates a lot of disturbance, but it also creates a lot of resistance, a lot of resistance and a lot of lift. So I'm able to fish this bait up and over through that cover slower than I could if I had just a real small trailer on the back of it that doesn't drag a lot of water. Um, something like that's gonna allow that bait to get deeper, quicker. I'm gonna have to fish it faster to keep it up in the water column where I want it. Same as if I went to a half ounce you know, swim jig as well. The only difference there, and when I will go up to a heavier size, if the cover I'm fishing sticks above the surface of the water, Okay, and, and the main time that this really comes to mind is, is in Florida fishing Kissimmee grass, because a lot of that grass may be, you know, it may be a foot, 14, 16 inches above the surface of the water. So if you throw like a, a toad out there that doesn't weigh anything, you don't have any weight on it, it's only gonna touch the water every now and again. You know, it's not hardly gonna stay down in it, but if you throw a half ounce jig, it's gonna weigh enough that it's gonna kind of pull that grass down and you're gonna be able to keep your bait in the water a little bit more. That's the one situation where a really light bait um, this time of year doesn't work well for you. You actually need something that has a little bit of weight if you're fishing vegetation that is coming up above the surface of the water. But if it's real close to it, you know, just maybe an inch or two above it, that three eighths is going to do you just fine. So um, a big thing with what you're what you're really looking for as to where these these fish are actually going to be a, i mean the thing that i always am thinking is a, a a hole in the grass or a hole in the vegetation or a hole in the in the bush or the buck bush or the tree or something like that anywhere where it looks visibly like man there could be a bed sitting right down in that or or between these two pieces of cover 
those are certainly going to be places where where I'm going to make sure to make a cast um, as you know in those type of places as well as the trunk of a big tree I mean I think of like a willow tree cypress tree anything like that where you've got the trunk of a tree those fish a lot of times will spawn right at the base of that trunk kind of right, right where that flattens out and meets the ground maybe there's some roots that stick out a little bit further they like that hard bottom you know or hard surface a lot of times um, so the base of those bigger you know, big, big trees. It may be a tree this big and it's nothing but a slick trunk. It looks like, you know, at the water's line, but down below it, there's no telling how many roots go out in any direction. So getting your bait right up against the, the base of that tree can be really, um, really key. And then any type of thin mats, you know, we talked about the trash daubing last month, um, kind of plays in over into this month a little bit as well. But uh, if you've got some duckweed that's already coming up or any of that sawdust mat type stuff, those fish that end up having a bed underneath of that stuff really, really can get aggressive, especially on a, on a frog. Um, you get a good sunny, warm day, and those fish that are absolutely locked onto a bed will blast a frog if, uh, if their bed is underneath one of those little mats of stuff. So those are, those are great, great places to be looking for them. But, um, but yeah, fish methodically, don't fish too fast, get in an area, and a big thing with it, you get in an area where you start getting bit, man, really slow down and pick it apart because a lot of times those bass are gonna be kind of clustered up, not like a bluegill bed, but a lot of times you're gonna find areas where you know you could get in there and sit still and uh, just be anchored up and catch multiple fish without ever having moved the boat this time of the year because when you find the right situation, the right cover, combination probably going to be multiple fish there close by for both of these baits the great thing with this is that i fish them on the same rod and reel setup um, very very good setup for both of them just given the fact that you know i'm fishing in a lot of the same type of cover um, and they're they're fairly similar as far as you know the the way that uh just the application that you need them for uh, johnny morris carbon light rod and reel seven three medium heavy action rod is what i like with that and i like that seven five to one carbon light reel 50 pound braid is my go-to um, with both of those and that's just a dynamite setup um, you know for for both of these both of these baits it's, it's a long enough rod that you've got enough power with it um, some people would probably tell you to throw a meat or a heavy action rod i like that medium heavy personally because it gives you a little bit of tip makes your casting a little bit better um, and then it's not just such a broom handle that it, you know, I feel like you, you overpower those fish sometimes with a, a heavy in this situation. So I love that medium heavy, um, again, but seven, three, I do like a little bit more length, you know, a seven foot rod, medium heavy, and eh, probably not quite enough. That seven, three gives you just a little bit more to, uh, to work with, to be able to drive the hook home and get those fish coming out of that cover. Take these two baits, get out there on the water and uh, enjoy, enjoy this time of year because uh, it can be a fantastic time of year to catch some fish.